done. Hope there's no technical difficulties. Um, it's automatically advancing. It is. Do you not? <laughs> 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 Hi, uh, my name is Sebastian Bentall. Um, this is work co authored with David Sheckman. Uh, David's at Northwestern Pittsburgh School of Law at NYU School of Law and the International Computer Science Institute. And it's advancing automatically again, which is hilarious. <laughs> um, I'm going to talk while we uh, do the technical <laughs> stuff this for, so, uh, before lunch. So um, our plan for this paper is to offer guidance about how to design and audit artificially intelligent systems for compliance with fiduciary duties. Uh, I'm going to talk about what a fiduciary duty is and what we mean by AI and why you might want to have fiduciary AI before talking about our plan to guide the design and auditing of it, which involves six steps, uh, the articulation of the context of the system, the identification of the principles, the assessment of best interest of the principles, the aggregation of those interests, and lastly, ensuring the loyalty of the system to those interests of having uh, care informed by contextual expertise. So um, why are we talking about this? Um, fiduciary duties um, are legal obligations on agents in certain roles. Uh, a lot of trusted professional roles like doctors, lawyers, trustees, corporate directors. And the language here is the fiduciary is an agent to the principal or sometimes the beneficiary who employs them. So principal agent problems, uh, many of you are probably familiar with this from your respective fields, but fiduciary duties are the legal solution to the principal agent problem. And while they vary a lot by jurisdiction and sector, generally they have a duty of loyalty, which is a duty to act in the best interest of the principal, and a duty of care, which is a standard of prudence that's higher than the normal tort law standard of prudence that's um, sort of, uh, flavored by uh, contextual expertise. So uh, for each professional context, the ramifies these general duties uh, in a specific way called subsidiary duties. So an example is a trustee that's responsible for somebody else's funds uh, is subject to a prudent investor rule, which is a specific rule about how to be careful when managing somebody else's funds. Okay. Now, by AI, uh, we mean this in the most general possible sense. We're not just talking about generative AI. We're talking about the ubiquitous, oh, my slides disappeared. Why? <laughs> We're talking about <laughs> so ubiquitous uh, automated user interfaces, whether they're apps or uh, websites or vehicles or voice assistants, and the automated business operations and kind of interactions that come behind those, which are often trained on user data or um, otherwise uh, using foundation models and like. It's all AI. This topic. And uh, the reason why you might want fiduciary duties for AI um, are twofold. Like, one, there are currently fiduciary duties in place. There are fiduciary laws or uh, professional rules and sectors governed by this legal regime. And um, if you were to deploy AI into those sectors, you would. We're good. Right, no worries. Um, so there are currently areas, sectors of the economy that are governed by fiduciary duties. And if you were to try to deploy AI into those sectors, you would be covered by those laws. And so you'd want to know how to be compliant with those laws. Also, uh, the reasoning behind why we have fiduciary duties uh, extends to many new applications of AI. And there have been many arguments in the literature arguing that fiduciary duties might be the way to address power asymmetries between AI and the people affected by them. Because the point of fiduciary duty in the legal theory is to address 
the asymmetry of knowledge and power that certain experts and professional roles have over the principles that employ them. Um, often, this is uh, this asymmetry of knowledge and power is sufficient in common law for there to be a fiduciary relationship, which means that there are these obligations. Um, and while like new AI applications are have not been tested under this sort of common law theory, it's also uh, been advanced as a reason to have new statutes for things like voice assistance, social media platforms, etc. There's a, an economic argument that runs to parallel to this more sort of a normative legal theory, which is that um, in these cases where you have this asymmetry of um, knowledge and power, you get uh, a transaction cost issue. Uh, if the principal is unable to negotiate and monitor their contract with the agent, um, then there's going to be something wrong with that market. So that's the law and economics theory of fiduciary relations, which um, also works in the case of AI, where we know that there's a problem with so the notice and consent system, which currently regulates consumer interaction with AI. Um, you might have checked the box saying that you've read a contract when, in fact, you haven't. That's the problem. Um, so uh, we're uh, writing this paper as an intervention, and what we see as sort of a sweet spot, it's a, an unsettled area of law. And people are thinking about passing new statutes and putting them on the books. Uh, but there's also uh, some cases where this already applies under existing law. So suppose there's a, a legal precedent or a statute, uh, such as the um, Data Governance Act and the EU, saying there's a fiduciary duty for some sort of digital domain. Um, you might try to, when designing that AI, look to our paper for guidance about how to design something that is compliant with it. And we're also hoping that if someone does an investigation or an audit of compliance with these laws, someone might look to our paper and say, oh, this is a nice sort of framework for assessing this compliance. Uh, we think that if we can bring these two things into alignment, uh, we can get more uh, satisfied with customers or beneficiaries of these fiduciary applications, contribute to the settlement of this law later on, and inform policy. So what's the subject? Well, we're, uh, we're providing a six-step guide for the design and audit of fiduciary AI. Um, as I said, the questions are, what is the context of the system? Uh, who are the principles of the system? Uh, what are their best interests? And if there are many principles uh, with different interests, how do you aggregate those best interests? Um, once you've established all that, the question is, is the system loyal to those interests? And then lastly, there's a question of care. Um, is there a context-specific level of prudence being observed in, by the designs of the system? So step-by-step step first, the context. Um, many different sort of regulated sectors in the economy, uh, trusts, healthcare, financial services, corporate governance, uh, social media, uh, digital assistance, uh, in, and any particular context, automated vehicles, you know, the list goes on, but drilling on any particular context, the question is, what are the different roles of actors in that context? So uh, for social media, you might say, well, there's the users, and there's also the advertisers, and there's the people that operate the system, and there's also the shareholders of the system, and they have different interests in this network. Um, and then the question is, what are the norms in that context? Uh, in many of these cases, there are already some known subsidiary rules for your professional domain. Of course, the designer of the asset should be aware of those context-specific rules. There might be other norms that are not explicit uh, in the law. But identifying these contextual norms and rules is the first step. The second step, say so which roles are the principles? And it's probably surprising, but shouldn't be how often this stuff gets missed in the design of a lot of these systems. If you have um, if you have a system which has certain principles in mind, the idea is that you can't just depend on a sort of naive consent metric or direct sort of operation of the user interface in order to satisfy their best interests. An example would be um, if I've got an email service, 
and I've got a button that says delete my email. Um, sometimes the sort of wider email service will retain the email for a little bit in case you want to change your mind. So, uh, you know, a naive user can very easily delete something, make a mistake, something that is uh, reflecting the best interests of the user needs to go an extra step. So that's kind of what we're suggesting by the by designating particular roles as principles. And we might have um, multiple roles that are principles, and then we'll have to figure out sort of the hierarchy of when we're dealing with con conflicts. So one of the legal sort of complications of, say, having fiduciary duties of a social media platform to its users is that, well, these are uh, companies most often incorporated under Delaware corporate law, and so the corporate directors have fiduciary duties to their shareholders. And people have asked, well, what do you do in this conflict of duties? So this is the that stage of the process where we want to identify those conflicts and figure out what to do when they conflict, and possibly saying, well, this one is a higher priority than this one in these cases. So now we've identified the principles. The question is, what is their best interest? Um, and there's quite a bit of literature lately in the AI context about reward modeling which is essentially how do you learn the utility function of the agent or the system that you're training for? So here's a sort of just a Bellman equation, simple reinforcement learning setup. Uh, suppose I'm training the system using it to optimize something. That R, that reward model, is uh, how do I make sure that that reflects the interest of the principal? And there's uh, many different data sources and techniques being explored in the literature on this. Now, you could just ask people what they think. And there's clever ways of organizing people's information uh, to ask and figure out what they, what, um, what their preferences are. You can learn from their behavior by observing it using inverse reinforcement learning. You could measure their well-being correctly. But where the law winds up settling on this issue is something like a reasonable person standard, where there's a generalized understanding of what most people need in a particular setting. So uh, we're not advocating for any one of these techniques. We're advocating for a combination of these techniques, maybe getting towards some sort of legal consensus or even a foundation model for user rewards. Okay. Uh, aggregation. So how do you aggregate many different conflicting principles um, if you have it. So there's a lot of pesky impossibility theorems of social choice. Our advice is not to despair. Um, try to separate assessment from aggregation so it's as little like voting as possible. Uh, you have partially ordered preferences, use multi objective optimization when necessary. Uh, but there's also uh, input from the legal precedent. Context. So this is not a problem that is new. Uh, tr trustees have had multiple efficient beneficiaries. Uh, before, and that's why there's uh, subsidiary duties of impartiality in many fields, which forbids self interest and favoritism. Uh, there's also, in some subsidiary duties, some kind of sort of scientific or quantitative or otherwise standard sense of best interest or care, which can help iron out idiosyncratic interests that might throw a wrench in the works of aggregation. Okay. So, uh, loyalty. Uh, what we've done is we've, we've analyzed what the best interests of the principles are and sort of how to generalize over many principles. But is the system actually loyal to those interests? Um, so the legal standard on the general loyalty is a, is a no conflict. So the system must not be designed to conflict with the best interests of the principles. So an auditor designer has to check for that. But there may also be context specific. Uh, elaborations of loyalty. One that's been raised in the context of AI specifically is the duty of disclosure, um, which is the duty to disclose facts when there is a potential conflict of interest. So you might expect that some of this training process or aggregation process might be noisy, you might have room for error. Uh, a duty of disclosure says, well, when there's a potential conflict of interest, you have to notify the principals, possibly giving them an opportunity to contest the result. And lastly, we have uh, the duty of care and so the application of care to AI. So this is a standard improvement of prudence informed by expertise and professionalism. 
that's sort of domain specific. And this is where I think we can uh, have something like a prudent AI rule that incorporates uh, many of the known AI risks that are already in the literature, things like negative side effects, reward hacking, distributional bias and foundation models might be bundled into a prudent AI rule that at the four yeah, and then gets deployed in many different domains. That's the talk. Uh, we're trying to provide practical guidance for future applications. Uh, we're also trying to motivate and structure future research by tracking AI risk research into um, categories of legal liability, hopefully sharpening uh, both fields in their discourse around uh, what AI regulation ought to be and how to meet those demands, hopefully to inform AI policy in the future. I'm happy to take any questions uh, by email or at lunch um, or any other. Thanks.